God, I saw the most amazing thing today. I saw a kitty backpack. A kitty backpack. No, not a satchel that sits between the shoulder blades of your pussy. That's not the kind of backpack that I'm talking about. It's a, it's, I mean, for humans, it's, it was, it's hard shell and it's got decent sized holes on the side and, and, and in the back, looking out at the world while the human is, is wearing it, there's a little back bubble that stares out to the world. That's like a little half spherical, clear little bubble. And, and that's where you see the kitty head. It's where a little kitty face looks at. And when a little kitty face does that, let me tell you, God damn it, it looks like, it looks like some awesome rocket kitty angel. I want one so badly. Not the Rocket Kitty Angel. I've got my own little Millie Biscuit. I can't stop calling her Biscuit in some form or another. Oh, my little bacon cheese biscuit. No, I want, I want one of those backpacks. I want to feel like I'm going into space with my cat on my back. Because for one thing, it would be so much easier when I'm carrying her to the vet. You know, because as it is when I carried her in her carrier, like her normal hard-bodied carrier that you're used to seeing, little petite size, like a little art bin that you put a kitty in, um, she would meow all scared, and I'd be like, it's okay, Millie, you're a little rocket kitty, where I'm just flying you in space. And I would try to pretend that her cat carrier was a space rocket. But now, now I can be the astronaut and she can be my passenger. I want a kitty backpack. Did I say hi, everybody? It's me, Rose. Hello. So I just wanted to record something really quick. Ha ha! Isn't that cute? I said that it was going to be quick. Look, face it. Turn it off now. Um, but um, I have had a surprisingly good week, and it feels like most of my time I talk about awful stuff. So I was like, God damn it, let's share some of this good, good loving. It, 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 none of it involves love. We all know that's dead, right? No, it's not, actually. Hey, Sanchez, so you were rightfully giving, uh, giving, giving it a giver, whatever it is. Okay, sorry. I'm not Canadian, I'm Virginian. So you were saying, rightfully so, that Sarah did an amazing job of hearing what your frustrations were and, and finding a practical solution to it. And it's a small world, kumbaya. So that was great. But Ms. Sanchez, let's take a moment to give you a little, a little bit of credit, too, for communicating your feelings for knowing within your heart that you could trust your loved one to share your frustration instead of carrying the family, the old family tradition of shoving stuff deep inside. Look at you. I'm so proud. The little Sanchez is almost all grown up. Okay. So before I talk about how awesome this week was, let me just say real quick that the previous couple of weeks or so, not so great, uh, in case you didn't hear about the wildfires, the forest fires, known as the Eagle Creek Fire, here in the gorge. The gorge is this whole strip of, of forestry and river and waterfalls, and it's fucking gorgeous, but that's not why it's called the gorge. It's not like somebody was like, hey, you know, we can predict the future when, when people aren't going to really even want to use vowels in their, in their things like Tumblr and, and Flickr. But, but we're going to keep our vowels, but why don't, we just, why don't we just abbreviate gorgeous and call this the gorge? By Jove, I don't think so. But that week with all the, so the gorge fire, the Eagle Creek fire, in case you haven't heard, was started by a 15-year-old boy 
throwing fireworks into an old growth forest when we hadn't had rain in 90 days, which is very unusual for here, not great for anywhere. There's fire warnings everywhere, and I don't know, even without all that, doesn't it seem like a fire hazard to set off fireworks in a fucking forest? Yeah. So that happened. And what that meant was that we had uh, air quality way worse than China. Like, you know those pictures where you see China or Los Angeles? But I want to keep saying China, 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 like Donald Trump. Like, vagina, vagina. Oh, angry, angry vagina. Okay, sorry. I had some extra caffeine. Very sorry. And I've had a really good week, so I'm a little peppy. Um, but so, you know, like when we see those pictures of just like smog and like you can't see like past your hand kind of air quality, we had some of that here in Portland. Um, and it's not recommended uh, for anyone and especially not for the elderly and the asthmatic. I'm half of those. Um, yeah, so that sucked because even even though I was able to stay inside for a week, which believe it or not, even little depresso me did not want to do. Um, <coughs> sorry, I had to burp. Um, it was ooh, a little little aftershock in the throat there. Um, it was so hot that I still in the mornings had to like put fans in the windows to bring in the air to cool down the apartment, which means bring in all the smoke. So yeah, it was like a week of just laying around and hitting my, hitting my asthma puffer a lot. Uh, but that was, that was then, this is now, S.E. Hitton. Stay golden, pony boy. How far am I going to go on that one? I think I just stopped it. Um, so back to this week and its awesomeness. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had run into this guy, Jeremy. He is the one that started the Weird Book Club. That's what it's called. I'm not being pejorative or judgy or whatever uh, about it. Um, <laughs> don't, leave, don't leave a negative review because I, you thought I was being pejorative saying Weird Book Club. Little, little fucking church lady of harsh reviewers. There, that'll do her. Right, Sanchez? Okay. Um, but it's, that's the name of the fiction be, the book club because they specialize, like they focus on reading like weird fiction, fantasy, gothic, whatever. Um, and, and I guess as you can tell from my deep sigh, I kind of like lost interest in the group, but I really liked the person who had started it. He was often the only reason why I would go to the book club, um, when I was trying to like get some more steps back into humanity from somebody who felt like I'd been living in a cave for a while. Um, so as luck would have it, a couple of weeks ago when I was in the library, I ran into the guy that started the book club, Jeremy, and we chatted for, for a couple of minutes and, um, and both realized, like, hey, we'd like to hang out sometime. And so I, I started the ball rolling, and he picked it up and threw a Hail Mary pass. Look at me. That's the end of my sports analogies. Um, he, he invited me. He has a dual free membership to the art museum. So he invited me to that, which was really great because I had just, I actually went to the art museum after I ran into Jeremy a couple of weeks ago because I can get in for five bucks. But there were some exhibits there that I really wanted to see again. So doing that for free was, was the best. And they had a new exhibit that I had not seen before, which was a history of African American photography, um, all the way from tin, from tin types to Polaroids and all that. Um, so yeah, so so Jeremy and I went to the to the art museum and um, just like deep talking right away, um, which is is why I wanted to hang out with him again. Um, because he's a good conversationalist. He doesn't do small talk. He's not boring. He's, you know, so at, you know, at, at that time had not displayed any, um, any gross misogynistic, pig-headed, bullshitted, privileged, fucked hardery, whatever you want to call it. Who cares? So far, he hadn't displayed himself an asshole, especially to me as a woman. How about that? Um, so, so the art museum time and everything was great. He's not as visually 
minded as I am. So that's really, really different for, for me. Um, but it was still, it was, it was very enjoyable. Like I said, it was, it was a lot less about looking at the art and a lot more about just walking and having a very nice conversation and like getting to know a, another, another smart human being. Sure. I'll include myself as, as, as a smart, therefore he is another smart, you know, smart ish booky person. Um, and then afterwards, um, we walked around and we both were hungry. So it's like, well, let's go ahead and just like go grab a bite to eat. And I'm, you know, since I don't go out and do much and since I'm by myself and in control of my own world a lot, um, I've gotten better at kind of like, no, what it like, like I'm open to any suggestion because like I don't go out to eat a whole lot. So I don't know places like, I don't know. It's, I can't really put it into words. But I can really tell, I can really tell ways that I'm changing in terms of, of how I feel being around people, in terms of my own anxiety that I carry about myself in the situation has diminished, and my anxiety about whatever the other person might be doing has diminished. And I know a lot of this also really has to do with the kind of people that I am, I am allowing into my world. Um, cause I am, I'm trusting my gut instinct. That's just it. If, if those things weren't happening, um, I would know, oh, that means that's not a good person for me instead of my old way of like, oh, I must somehow make this work because that's, I'm right. No. Okay. Who cares? Um, so yeah, we went to this like little, little sushi place around the corner and it was like mild and pleasant and shady and stuff to to sit outside it was really like the second day of being able to see the blue sky for the first time in a week so I was like oh my god we just want to be outside museum was wonderful let's sit outside and eat and 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 basically sit outside and talk for like a, at least another two hours um we hung out from like 10 in the morning until four in the afternoon that's crazy that's a crazy long hang time um but here are some of the things that, that I learned about Jeremy in the process of all this. Um, my new friend. Look at me. I'm making new friends with a grown-up. Um, he's 41 years old. And his current job is he works at a, um, at a, at a psychiatric facility that's um, where children live full-time. Um, and it's not necessarily because... The kids like need to be in straight jackets and they're like that horribly bad, but it's probably more often the case that it's just the only way for that child to be safe at home full time would be if one parent could stay home with it full time, um, which may not always be possible in some families. Um, and we also don't know the families that some of these kids have come from. But anyway, that's, and, and they range, like, I think he said the average age was 11, 11 and 12 years old. Um, but every now and then, if like there's, if it's like a really severe situation, um, you know, or sometimes it's just social services have stepped in and doctors have said this, you know, whatever, um, that as young as 10 and then maybe I think as old as like as 13. But, um, and it's weird. Like, I was I'm like, that's got to be stressful. Like, and, and, you know, they, they talk, um, cause he's, I don't know, he's talking about trying to like a, do a career change and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, it is, it, it is really hard as one can imagine to part of your job district restriction is to have to like restrain and put an 11 or 12 year old in a chokehold because that's the only way that you can save that child from themselves. Um, you don't really have that in very many job descriptions, do you? So, so I think that, that kind of speaks volumes, um, because he's clearly not a sadistic motherfucker. He's not like an, a nurse ratchet or a doctor ratchet or whatever. Um, it, it, it's, it's obviously like very troublesome and, and weighs on him. Um, and the other interesting, more fun facts, more me telling somebody else's story instead of my own. Um, but when he was when he was six, his um, 
his 11 month year old brother died. Um, and his family pretty much shattered from, from that point um, where the parents split up and eventually made healthy remarriages, but still that shattered the family. Um, and so that was just interesting because we were, you know, we were talking, you know, like obviously about our childhoods and backgrounds and stuff. And, and I was six when my dad was diagnosed with lung cancer. And then a couple of years later, like my family was shattered. So it's like, we kind of like, oh, we understand what that kind of like having your earliest foundation, you know, completely rocked under you and what, what that can be like, which isn't something you necessarily have in common with, with the average person, I guess. Who cares? But anyway, um, no, I'm all raspy voice now. I'm very sorry. Oh, this must sound so gross in your ear. I'm so sorry. Um, but the interesting thing about that is um, for the past nine or ten years or so, he's been part of a volunteer group um, that does grief counseling for children, you know, for children who've suffered loss of some kind. Which, like, oh, my God, I would have fucking loved to have had that as a kid. Like, what a great thing. I mean, not it's not great that you need it, but, like, what a great thing that it's there. Um, and he found out about this from his, um, from his mom, who I guess probably did some of that as well. So it's just like, oh, this is their way of kind of um, coming full circle, I guess you'd say, from such a, you know, tragic event it's like he's he's found a way to process through it um by helping others who are gonna you know who are going through it as well which i don't know i was just i was super impressed with this with his character um and i know you're probably probably thinking to yourself what 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 many couple normative people might do hey rose do you fancy him no. For one thing, I fancy no one. I want no one. It's wonderful. Um, also, he's 41. So, yeah, just new. And for, there's, but it's just, and that's what was, that was also what was interesting about, like, just about the dynamic is, is my old, like, I have, I have so many old habits of, like, how I would um, interact with men based on potential bone de bone zone, you know? Um, and when you completely take that off the table and when you announce that that is off the table, like, cause we were talking about, about dating and stuff, which I'll get to in a second. And, and I was like, yeah, like my best thing is like since ending my marriage and moving out here, it's like, I've decided I just, it's just me for the rest of my life alone. And that's fine. And I just don't like I've I've had enough. I've had enough dick. I know what I'm not missing anymore. I didn't put it quite that graphically, but I did put it put it out there in some way that he found funny and amusing. But um he started talking about you know about him him dating and um cuz he Jesus Christ, like what an impressive motherfucker. Um you know, he didn't like he's had you know, he's obviously had relations with women and things like that, but he's never really been serious about trying to find a relationship and all that because he wanted to really get to know who he was first before he inflicted himself on another human being. That's not how he put it. That's how I view myself. Um, so he was, you know, so he basically, you know, just spent like a lot of time just like really working on himself and figuring himself out and, 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 you know, really working through things like he's he's a super introvert. So that's why he joined Toastmasters and then he started doing the meetup thing. Like like I really think he had a big shell um, to to crawl out of be, before I before I met him. Um, and one of the things so I was asking him, was like, so so dude, like, what is it like dating in the 21st century? I mean, granted, I've dated in the beginning of the 21st century, but it's so much different now. And Jesus Christ, I, I, I nearly, I nearly fell out of my chair and fainted because like the, the whole conversation about dating started with him saying that he, you know, had 
had just finished reading A Feminist Marxist History of Dating. You didn't see that, but I just like threw my hands up in the air like, oh, good Lord, you're like the perfect human being. You read A Feminist Marxist History of Dating? You, sir, you, sir, I must find a woman for you because you are a rare, rare breed. Holy shit balls. I mean, I've known some men who think that they're feminists just because they're pro-choice and they wash a dish or two. And that they don't, you know, they don't think women should be barefoot and pregnant. So it's like, ooh, that means I'm a feminist. No, no, you posers. It's a completely different thing. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, you know, just kicking back, reading a feminist Marxist history of dating on a Friday night. My name is Jeremy. That's the coolest. Okay. Um, and the other thing that, that really struck me, because, um, you know, he like, like he's done like, I guess like OK Cupid and what's the other one? Match.com. And then there's some other one called Bumble, which I don't know anything about. Um, but he was just saying that like, like just even on like Match.com or OK Cupid, like he was, he was bothered by the fact that like some of these sites are just so heavy emphasizing pictures of people and what your descriptions are, are just like a few words in comparison. It's basically like Instagram dating. Mm. And he was even saying, like with, even with like OkCupid and Match.com or whatever, like when you're just flipping through profiles of, you know, woman after woman after woman, it's just like pictures of women just like flowing through your phone or your screen. He's like, it just feels gross and pornographic after a while. Yes! He said that. He, a male species, a heterosexual, wanting to get his dick wet kind of a guy, actually saw things from a human perspective and not just I want to get my dick wet perspective. He saw the fact that all of this is just an objectifying process. Because he, he, he said, he's like, I would feel the same way if I was a gay man looking at just like pages of pages of men. It's like, you, you're just putting all this meat out there for me to look at. Like, oh, my God. Does that mean there's a future for your humanity? No, it does not at all. It's just really nice to see ever one tiny fucking little seed of it, though. Oh, man. I just... It was, it was amazing. It just, it was one of the most refreshing conversations that I've had with, with a human male in a long fucking time. You know, and the thing is, it's like every, you know, it's, it's, it's not like I've never heard a guy say a, a smarter, awesome thing before. I have. And sometimes they've even seemed sincere. Sometimes they even were sincere. But there's still, I've had, I have encountered a lot of guys who can say wonderful things but still sound like a complete douchebag saying it because it's so unnatural coming out of their mouth. They're just saying something that they know is what should be said or that the other person, they're saying what they think the other person wants to hear. And there was none of that. This is like, yeah, it was, it was it was a pre- it was a great day. It was a beautiful Saturday. Ah, oh, lucky me. And it's been it's been like a, such a good week. Like even my flu shot was like this is fine, because like I you know I went into the Safeway to get my prescription and they had this like weird little waiting room in the background which I learned about. I mean in the in the back room, um, which I learned about from my who cares from another time that I was there. Um, and so I was there to get my flu shot, and I was filling out the paperwork, and there's a part of the paperwork that has to do with, like, your insurance information. And I always get confused about which number, member I, member number, ID number, blah, 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 because sometimes the jargon is different. Sometimes I'm just stupid, but it just, like, that is, it just becomes like a clusterfuck in, in the center of my forehead, and and somehow, weirdly enough, I just, when I got to that point, I was like, 
I'm going to give them my insurance card. And I'm just going to say, I'm sorry. This part always confuses me on the forms. And I'm a bit disabled with some of the cognitive stuff sometimes. Because, uh, like, I just don't give a shit about about openly saying, like, look, I'm too fucking stupid to do something. And it's not that I'm stupid. I'm really smart in other ways. But there are certain ways that when my brain gets anxious, it's going to shut down. And I know enough now what what the potential is and, and what my skill set's going to be to mitigate it. And if the energy drain is worth me navigating it versus is this something that I can politely just ask someone else to do for me? You know, because... I'm by myself, but I don't have to do it all alone. I, you know, so that all went swimmingly well. And she told me that it might be like, like 20 to 30 minute wait. And I'm like, that's cool. Let me, can I go hang out in the, in the secret squirrel room? And she's like, yeah, there's, there's two other, other people there. I just wanted to give you a heads up. And I'm like, cool. I appreciate you communicating clearly to me. (laughs) Like, I really think I said something that ridiculous. Um, and I went back there, and it was like like a couple of old grizzled gay dudes. I couldn't tell at first if they were brothers, and then I always know they're a couple, and they're so cute with their with their canes and their really old bad tattoos, and they're and they're both over, and they both have like their like we like to drink beer bellies, and um, and they went in together to to get their flu shot, um. And I don't know, I started like, like, cause I mean, it was a very tiny room that suddenly like, it's, it's, it's three of us in there. And of course I'm going to feel self-conscious being the only, only woman who doesn't know what these guys deal is yet. So I have to make a joke like, like, okay, none of us are going to cry when we get our flu shots, are we? Or it's like something stupid. And, um, and they like chuckled and, and whatever. And then I just went back to like reading my phone once I broke the ice and then they went in and got their flu shot done together and they came out and, um, and I said, it must've gone great. I didn't hear any screaming. And they said, oh no, we just want to let you know, like, like she's, she's quick and painless. You'll do just fine. Like they were just, they were just like, it was like, we're all in the same flu shot boat together. We're all going to support each other in this. It was very sweet. Um, look at that tiny little, tiny little shred of humanity. And sure enough, when I went in there to get my flu shot, she was like simple, direct, no, no pain, no muss, no pus. That's what she wanted a flu shot, no muss, no pus. And she also said that, commented on how much she likes um, giving flu shots to people with tattoos because you just never know like where it's going to be or something. And this time, again, much like last year when I was in the hospital, um, she did not, there, there, were, there were no shots on, the, on, my, on my shoulder that has my son tattoo, not that, that the son in autumn leaf tattoos, it wasn't on that side, it was the side on the arm. Uh, the arm with the with the sacred heart on it. So, so, so yes. Once again, I I was I was able to sing. Shot through the heart, flus to blame. You give cooties a bad name, bad name. I did not really do that. Thank you. And then yesterday I went for a long ass walk with my 71 year old friend joy book club apparently i can only make new friends if they're from book clubs and their first names begin with j we've got jeremy and joy um so she and i did this big ass walk up to mount Tabor, which is a uh a, a volcano mound it's a dormant i was searching for the word dormant and i found it um <laughs> it's over here where here here it's right behind the pillow dormant thank you so we did not walk to the top of the dormant volcano um because we had walked all the way up uphill through the neighborhood um but we walked around paths and and just talked she's reading these different um science books um, that have to do with like nerves and and dna and cell production uh, and how that also influences personality and behavior. Um, you know, like a little light reading. She, she's a former nurse, um, former pediatric nurse. 
in case you haven't heard me mention her before, or I don't know if I, if I said this before, but yeah, I did. She's the one that like left her husband after 40 years, which is fucking badass. Um, and she's a grandmother and she's just, she's like I said, she's like a mix of like Sally Field and Daryl Hannah or something. She's awesome. Um, so we did our like walking around. I mean, she's super fit. That's what I'm trying to say. She's very thin and fit. As she said, well, yeah, if you if you almost die because of your colon, you'll lose a lot of weight. Good to know, Joy. Thanks. Um, I don't know why I did that. I've been in my living room today. Um, so we went walking and walking and talking and talking, and she gave me uh, an amazing compliment. Um, as she was talking about her science, her sciencey stuff, and then I was kind of counterbalancing it with like kind of like a, a, a philosophical and um, and and psychological research response kind kind of thing, and playing devil's advocate to this theory or that theory, and blah blah blah. As we're walking along in the beautiful sunshine, and and we haven't seen each other in about a month because she took. Um, a little trip and then we had the smoke fires here and I was busy with some stuff so this is like our first time hanging out in about in about three weeks or a month you know which is kind of you know a big gap if you're starting a new friendship and we don't know how to navigate these things none of us do none of us do nobody does don't believe the lies on tv nobody knows how to navigate this shit so anyway we're we're walking around the 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 reservoir. That's the other cool thing about Mount Tabor. There are reservoirs, big giant pools of water, big giant reservoirs. So we were walking around that, and that's when she said, "Rose, not my real name." <laughs> she said, "Rose, I've really I really missed you. You're the only one that I can talk to like this. You're the only one that I can have really deep conversations like, like this with. Like I can talk to anybody because Joy's a hell of a conversationalist. Don't get me wrong. But Joy was saying, you know, I can talk to a lot of, you know, to anybody about anything. She goes, but I don't enjoy that as, as much as I enjoy this. It's like, I was like, you could have knocked me over with a feather. What's next, Joy? Have you been reading a feminist Marxist history of data, dating for, for the geriatric set? No, okay, um, and and I just said like I don't know how to have any other kind of conversation. Like I can't, like I can do. And I told her I was like in jobs. That was like always my my most dreaded. Like I just would rather be alone than put myself through the experience of small talk with people that I just gave zero fucks about and had nothing in common with, and usually only heard mean vitriol coming out of them. Like kind of like what sounds like I dispute. Um, but it's just like, no, like, I'd rather just, like, read a book. Um, and and for me, small talk is draining because I have to work so hard at it, whereas, like, the kind of conversations that that I had with Jeremy and, like, with Joy and, like, when I'm with my other friends, like Spike and Kim and all that, like, that, that it, it's, like, energizing. Although afterwards... I usually have to recover for a day because I'm tired from it because it's energizing in that moment and it's really, really great. But it's like after a day with a person, I need like a day to recover. That's just me, you know. So, so that was all great talking about this, that, and the other thing and the who's that's and the what's it's. And, and then we walked all the way back down to where we started, like we did like a big ass loop. You walk like six miles is what I'm saying, which I know is nothing by, by posty standards, but by average, I, but I bet to the average standard, people who don't walk for a living, just walking six miles is something. I walked five miles the day before by myself. I walked another five miles this morning. Anyway, not to brag. I know, again, it's not bragging to somebody who walks for a living. I get that. En suite. It's a master bathroom. I wonder if they, I mean, it's kind of gross that in America they're called the master bathroom because it doesn't sound like you're just going to say the masturbation. And then, and then it just, of course, being from Virginia, I'm like, it's the master bathroom. Like it just has like a real slavery kind of like masters, like colonialism. Like, okay, sorry. 
Where was I? I don't know. Oh, yes, we were walking back downhill to where we started so I could pick up my library book and then go to the grocery store and, and go our separate ways. So there we were in the grocery store. Not we, I at this point. And I saw these two women that I adore, that I have seen on the bus for years, and I always think of them as Lydia Lunch and Lena Lovich. You have to Google these names to understand what I'm talking about. Lydia is spelled L-Y-D-I-A, Lydia Lunch. And then Lena is L-E-N-E, last name L-O-V-I-C-H. Isn't that nice? I'm spelling it out as if you're really going to look it up. You should. Lena Lovitch does great music. Lydia Lunch, on the other hand, not so much. But I'm very familiar with her work. And I've seen her naked ass, which is not, not a good sight, even, even on film. That's a different thing. But anyway, whenever I would see these two women together on the bus, I just always think, oh, it's Lydia and Lena. Like in my head, that's who I thought of them, and which made me feel good. Because it's like, I love Lena Lovitch. But, but these, these two women are closer to 60 than 50. I don't know which side of 60 they might be on. Um, but they might have also lived, well, I know they've lived really hard, hard lives, and that might also be like part of their, their facial thing. But what's, what stands out is they, had, they both have long hair, like past their shoulders, that they still dye pitch black. Like, they're, like they still, and, and um, well, Lid, uh, Lena, the one that I always thought of as Lena, her real name is Alice. And she, she still has like the big, huge things going through her ears, like what, what, what everybody who got into that primitive piercing and, and primitive tattoos back in the 90s, just like, it's not a plug, but it's like a big curved, you know, tribal looking thing. And, and, and her dyed black hair, I think is like, is like a matted braid E kind of thing that hangs long, which is why I thought of her as Lena. See, if you look up Lena Lovett, this will make sense to you. Um, and she is like, like lots of tattoos, including like, you know, like up on like that front part. Is that your collarbone? Yeah. It's always amazes me when those collarbone tattoos do not feel, cannot feel good. There's no, there's no, there's no fatty tissue there. I'm pushing on my collarbone. Ow. Um, and, and, I mean, they are a presence. They are an absolute presence. They, they obviously really loved weirdo, goth, industrial, oddball music, just as I, ha I have loved some of it. But for them, they are the walking genre, like in and of itself. And you don't see many women doing that. You'll see guys trying to pull off that, you know, whatever their favorite teenage boy look was all the way for a long time. But you don't see women doing it as much because there's so much more hell to pay for one thing, um, which is true because we, uh, the three of us talked about that. But anyway, so there they were in the grocery store. And, and the other one, the one that I um, call Lydia, she had her hair in, in like long, you know, like long hanging down pigtails kind of like like Marianne kind of like a like a like an old like a senior citizen gothic Marianne from Gilligan's Island <laughs> think about that with bangs oh, I love her so much um that's that's Deborah and Deborah and I had had talked once on the bus before because I had told her pretty much what I just told you that I always when I when I always saw them, I thought of them as Lydia Lunch and Lena Lovage and how that always cheered me up. And she took it as a compliment. So here when I saw them in the grocery store, this time they were together. And so I said, oh, remember, like I spoke to you at the bus stop. And she's like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then she turned to her friend, Alice, and she goes, this was the girl that I was telling you about, you know, like, like months ago on the bus. And then she turned to me and she goes, I haven't seen you in for so long. I was worried about you. I'm like, oh, my God, I actually live in this city. People remember me and miss me and worry about me. I really fucking live here. I exist. Lydia Lunch noticed me. No, not really Lydia. Deborah. So so we started talking and and the and Alice 
when I mentioned the Lydia Lunch, Lena Lovitch thing, she, she like, she said, oh, but you know, I, 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 she goes, she goes, people always, always tell, I, I, no, she said, sorry, I'm choking on this. Um, she mentioned that she, people will often just think and say to her, oh, Wendy O. Williams, because that's the only like old punk rock broad that, that they can think of. And when she said Wendy O. Williams, all three of us clutched our hearts and looked at each other while our shoulders dropped because we all knew that Wendy O. Williams had killed herself. And and it was just, you know, there it was just like there we are in the grocery store thinking about a suicide that happened 20 years ago. Three women who are kind of meeting, I mean, two of them know each other, but this is, hey, this is our first time hanging out. How's it going? Deep talks. Um, and, and so we just started, you know, so again, like with, with Wendy Williams, like apparently like Deborah didn't know the whole story. So Alice and I are explaining it to her and, and then Alice starts dropping all of her, her, her things. Like she starts saying like, oh, like, yeah, I really understood it because like I, I suffer really badly from, from depression. And I said, oh, oh, we're on the same page, sister. I'm on, I'm on disability for, for depression and PTSD. And she, and her eyes just got, she just got the like, oh, oh, I know who you are. In other words, like, oh, we all suffer. Yay. We recognize each other. Hooray. Life is awful, but we found each other. Um, and she just starts dropping all these horrible traumas that happened to her. That's, that's like, you know, contributing like to her mental health issues and like how the only reason why she's still alive and hasn't killed herself is because of her kids and grandkids. She's just like dropping all those. And then, you know, Deborah's chiming in like, well, I haven't had it like as bad in this, this ways as, as you, you know, cause I was kind of like, like, I, 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 I think, I think really what was happening was Alice and I had a moment there standing be, be, between the, the, the dinnerware there in the, in the grocery store, standing between the dinnerware that was 50% off because it's Thanksgiving decorated dinnerware and God forbid we're in September and people haven't bought their Thanksgiving dinnerware yet. So all that's there, like 50% off. And then the other side of us is the sushi case of all the fresh little prepackaged pretty little sushi foods. And then there's this like conveyor belt that goes all the way around where you can also like, like you point to the menu and, and, and Mr. Sushi will pick up an item and put it on the conveyor belt and it goes around like a little sushi train for you. I don't know. I've never done it. I just looked out of the corner of my eye. So we're just standing there between the dinnerware and the sushi and I think you know as Alice started sharing her her trauma I started sharing so we were Alice and I were basically just doing the dozens of trauma that's what we were doing it was like she would say one thing I would say another she would say one. it's like yeah we're like boom not not the kind of yeah so that's what we were doing not the kind of dozens and girly bonding that, you know, it wasn't that like, you know, sometimes you'll see women, girls dressed as women who haven't seen each other in a long time. And they were like, ah, I'm so glad to see you. Ah, and they like, hug and scream and, and kiss them. It's like, nope. Me and these women just start dropping traumas. <laughs> And and so then yeah, Deborah's like, oh, I haven't had it as bad as you have, but I've also had this. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, your rape is your rape. We we all have our we all bring our rapes to the table here, in the grocery store, bonding like sisters. And that's that's a weird yet beautiful thing. Um, we just, you know, because I one of the other things I I mean I was talking to Alice more for the first time since I talked to Deborah before. And I just, I just said to both of them, like, you know, when I first, like I, I mentioned that I had moved away for a while and that when I first moved back to Portland, like there was just so much I just did not fucking recognize. And the two of them just nodded their dyed black hair, chiseled, wrinkled, gothy faces in, in unison. God, they're so fucking adorable. And they're like, yes, we totally know. We did not recognize Portland. And I said, but then I saw the two of you. And and it just filled my dark little heart with joy to go, yes, there is still some of the Portland that I know and love. It's not completely gone. I can still be okay here because I've seen Lydia and Lena on the bus, which is the most ridiculous thing to say unless you're in our tribe. <laughs> I guess, 
because the two of them, I'm glad they had waterproof mascara on or waterproof eyeliner because their little eyes just welled up and they smiled and they gave me this hug. And let me mention here for the moment, for once my hair is not a crazy color orange. It's like a dyed red, but it's, I can fit in like a normal. And I was wearing like a red checkered shirt. Like I did look like fucking Marianne from Gilligan's Island, only with like a short flippy do. Flippy do. And, and so, like, I look completely different from these women, but I completely know their genre, music, subculture, whatever background, because I've been so immersed in it. And, again, playing the dozens in trauma, like, these were my sisters. And it was just, it was just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It was wonderful. It was delightful. It was weird. It was, poor. I guess it's, 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 it's the kind of, the kind of random interaction that made me fell in love with, made me fall in love with Portland back in, back in 98 when I first moved here. Um, yeah, so there's that. And um, let's see, is there anything else? Let's see, there is, I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, I mean, I'm going to mention it. But I'm not going to talk about it because I'm in a real big uh, risk aversion zone right now between now and um, and when I do this big thing that I'm super, super psyched about. Um, so I'm just like I'm just maintaining my positive status quo and, you know, all that. Um, but my uh, my ex-husband lost his job of 14 years. I think he had it for 14 years. Yeah. I don't know. There's that. Um, <laughs> and I'm just going to stop with that. Let's see, is there anything else? Oh, I walked another four miles in the sunshine today. I tried a new coffee shop. I did not care for their coffee at all. It was not good. It's really the only sour note to my day. The biscuit was wonderful. And then walking around... Uh, I freaked people out by saying good morning because that's what we used to do here in Portland. That's what Portlanders do. You'd see, you pass somebody on the sidewalk and if, you know, if you can't muster up a hay or a morning or an afternoon, if you can't muster up that bullshit, then you at least like make eye contact, eye, conk, eye contact and like nod and you acknowledge you're the person. That's how Portland was. That's not how it's become. But today, so that's why I ended up like I could tell everybody this, like, oh, you're new here. You're freaking out because I'm saying good morning to you. Um, and the best was this elderly woman in her wheelchair with her little dog. And I knew that she was going to know what for in terms of the good mornings. Like the olds fucking love me because I will stop and talk to the olds because I've got all the time in the world like they do, only more of it because I'm younger, but still no job. So lots of time. And um, so so this woman's like wheeling down. And I also really love old ladies that wear sports caps and sports jerseys and sports slippers. Fuck yeah. I could not even tell you the team because I just blur that shit right out. I just see sportsy blank. Um, but but she's she's there in a wheelchair with her with her cute little dog and I'm like good morning how's it going she goes oh good morning and like you know and and we stop and and I mentioned like how adorable her, her little dog is and but I wasn't gonna like uh, you know just start petting it because you never approach an animal that's not yours because you don't know its behavior and and the first thing she said was like oh yeah she's he's 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 a little he's a little she goes well he's from California. <laughs> So he's a, he's a he's a little nervous and tends to, and can be a little bitey, you know. He's from California. He's not the best behaved, and I'm like, you fucking salty ass bitch in a wheelchair, you rule. Because as I've mentioned before, we hate how much the California transplants have fucked up this city, and I know that sounds like an isolationist. And fuck off. You don't live here and haven't seen all the people that have been pushed out and, like, actually pushed out. The bulldozers, fucking rich assholes. 
Um, so yeah, that's the first thing out of this old lady's mouth is apologizing for her dog who might have shitty behavior because he's from California. And then she, she, she started to explain and, and, and I, and I leaned over and, and I didn't touch her, but I kind of like, like, like made the gesture as one would like, like touch like the other person's arm. And I just said, Oh honey, you don't need to explain. My cat's from California too. The second chance program, right? And she just laughed because that's this this pet adoption thing. It's like when the when the animal places get overcrowded down in California, the shelters, the animal places. When the shelters, the animal jails get overcrowded um, and they run out of room, then they'll send a bunch of them up here um, as their second chance to get adopted out. And so Millie spent her formative hours in a van coming up here, as did this woman's dog. And that's, is that really how I'm going to end this? It might be. I might be wrapping this up. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to actually blurt out any more for a while. I'm still kind of like taking, taking the time that I need to get some shit done, which has been productive. Um, I have a huge stumbling block of still not trying to figure out what I'm going to do about phone the phone situation. Oh, who cares? We'll we'll all talk about this when I'm when it's done. Um, so this this might be uh, it just might be a while, my friends. But it's it's still good to hear everybody else chiming in. Rainbow, have you thought about doing episodes instead of segments? Maybe I'm just crossing a line here. Maybe that's not even something that Sanchez wants to deal with. I'm just I'm always looking ways to fill in the gaps. That's me. Oh, this is how I'll end it. Okay. Two magnificent young girls. First one. She's, again, both of these women were anywhere between the ages of 18 and 23. I can't tell. When you get to be a certain age, everybody looks 12. All right. And they didn't look 12. So I'm going to put them into that category. Young women. First one, Saturday, when I was on the bus on my way downtown, I was sitting right by um, the back door, and all the seats in the front of the bus were occupied, and this young woman gets on the bus, and she's wearing um, black, like, little uh, booty shoes, like cute little, little, little ankle boots. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and, and this, like, you know, like, black... Uh, a uh, knit uh, trouser, fancy dressy pant thing. I can't explain. Kind of haremish looking, yeah. And then this like black, um, also like you know polyester synthetic. I don't know because I wear cotton. I don't know what this other chemical fabric is that that people wear. Um, and it had like all these like spangles, all this yeah spangles and stuff like like very very glittery. And and she was like a round girl. Um, she was, she was probably like my kind of, she was my kind of roundness, only she also had boobs. Like I'm just like a giant fat pear. She was like a fat pear, but with also fat boobs, um, which is like pertinent to the story. It was very attractive. Um, but she, she was like, she was like a, like a big chubby girl. And like my first thought was like working it. Like I just like, ah, like, look at that confidence. That's like, I never have that kind of confidence. She's like getting on, on the bus. And then I realized she's got this like blonde wig on that's like a Goldilocks wig. And then I realized she's got little pig ears on it. And she's got a, a little rubber um, pig nose, like dang, like an elastic, like around her neck because she's like pulled it off of her face. Because she's going somewhere in costume as Miss Piggy. And she has, when she gets on the bus, she has to walk like all the way to the back of the bus to sit down. And I'm just thinking like, what a fucking badass this young girl is who probably was teased growing up for being overweight. And here she is throwing it into a Miss Piggy con uh, costume and fucking serving it. And she wasn't she was not walking on the bus with that kind of confidence that I'm just telling you about. Like, she really did kind of, she was walking on the bus like, oh, I'm a young girl that thought this was a good idea for a costume, but I didn't think what it would be like walking past all these strangers on the bus. So when it's her stop, she's getting off the bus, so she's get, getting off at the door that I'm sitting, like, right by. 
and like get this like see her like all up close and like really take she has her makeup like on point I mean just so fucking adorable and so while she's wait, waiting for the bus to pull to a stop I just looked up to her and I said I just want to tell you how fucking adorable you are and that you have completely started my day off to a good start like I can't tell you how adorable you are like I hope that's okay for me to say and her face just like lit the fuck right up like like it just was like like the sparkles on her shirt were nothing compared to the smile she gave me she goes oh my god thank you and then she had to like suddenly get off the bus and so that was that so that was girl number one girl number two was whatever day it was oh the day that I got my flu shot I did like a fuck ton of man I was all over the city that day that's it's kind of fun to go to like a bunch of different parts of the city and a bunch of different neighborhoods in one day it's like being on vacation where you live it's kind of cool because you're doing it all by bus and, and foots you know like in a car it's I'm, sorry I'm scattered right now I've been talking too long and now I get scatterbrained second woman I'm I'm walking um uh, uphill hot and sweaty at this point in my day of walking around and kind of like ready for the day to be done I'm ready to like turn around and go home pretty soon and I see this same youngish age woman um kind of a homely face not an ugly face but not like a super like you know like aver- like my average kind of face um wasn't wearing any makeup her hair was kind of like this like faded you know, where she had done, like, multicolored, like, streaks in it. It was, like, long, kind of dishwater brown, but also with, like, colors in it. Like, she hadn't really kept up the, the look. And she was walking. Her costume just involved, it was, like, like a short taffeta red skirt with, like, like a sequenced satin heart on it and then some little bolero jacket. And it was just this whole, like, red, red and pink heartsy like she was like a walking valentine basically and again it's just in the middle of like you know no reason for this to be existing it's like a Fellini movie come to life like oh hey you know here's a costume person it's just like do 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 and she and again it was just like beautiful because it's like you know when you don't when you don't expect it and so I just like stopped and I said I said oh I just have to tell you you look beautiful that the whole your whole ensemble like that's just great like ah you just that's you know I said something like that and she goes oh thank you and I said I said I said thank you like this really has like I'm walking up uphill and I was miserable and then I see this and now I feel like I can continue walking and she's like oh my god you're so sweet and I think to myself like oh my god I'm such a loon just giving these like just stopping people to give them compliments and then I was telling but it's not I don't think it's that loony I think people like to hear nice things and especially you're not you know I'm not being lascivious about it like like this guy uh, like last year year before kind of like sped up his walk to catch up with me when I was walking around downtown one time wearing like one of my cute vintage dresses and and he stepped up really really quickly which kind of startled me but his whole reason for it was to tell me how much he liked my dress and it was a great compliment because he wasn't saying, oh, your body really fills out that dress, or I really like how that dress hangs on your body, or that dress really accentuates your body. It was, it was just the dress. He just, like, said yes to the dress. And so, and this is what I'll end on. Oh, man. So I was telling, explaining this whole series of sequence of things, and there was so much sequence with both of these girls, let me tell you. So I was explaining it to, to Joy, because I just like, oh, these like two little, two little fun costume angels, what a delight. And I was telling her about it, and, and she's, like, she's like, you didn't worry about giving them a compliment? And I said, what, because I sound like a loon? I'm used to sounding like a loon. I am a loon. I get paid to be a loon. I'm a loon. Who cares? And she's like, she's like, no, like, didn't you worry that, 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 that they might think you were being lezzy or something? <gasps> what? I, I, I stopped. I stopped. Like, wait a minute, Joy, just a couple of seconds ago, I was flying high from the compliment that you, as a 71-year-old smart woman, enjoy spending time with me because you can have deep conversations and challenging conversations and blah blah and you you 
use the word lazy? What? And I stopped there on the path, and I just blurted out, I haven't heard that word since I was 12. And I probably said it exactly in this tone of voice because it was that shocking and weird to me because she's not homophobic at all. She's, you know, but to me that, that word is something that you use in the pejorative. And and so I I was like, yeah, I, I said, I haven't heard that word since, since I was 12. Now, granted, you know, what I heard a lot more often by the time I was 17 was what a faggot I was. But, you know, that's what they called me, punk rock fag. And I was like, huh? And she just looked at me and I said, I, and, and she, and it just like, you could see that as I was explaining, like, how I haven't heard that childish word since childish times when I was a child being tormented by children, like, all the wheels were turning in, in her head, and she, like, boom, I mean, she just, like, got it instantly, and she goes, I'm so sorry, she, she goes, you know, I didn't, and I said, I said, I know you're not, uh, like, homophobic, I know, and she goes, no, no, she goes, she goes, she goes I, I just was wondering, like, like, like if you were giving a compliment to a guy, would he worry that, that you were coming on to him? And she goes, and here I pulled this archaic word because that's my old vocabulary that, that was so, and I was like, it's, it's okay, old lady. But, but boy, I can really, I can really understand why Sanchez and Sarah still would have trepidation sometimes dealing with the public about the fact that there are two mommies like, boy, it really drove the point home that I might think that everybody is just not... And like I said, it's not... Joy's not a cunt. She's not a phobe. She's an old lady using an old-ass term that she's never been challenged before because she lived... She came from a fucking small-ass town. She lived a completely Catholic life with a verbally abusive alcoholic husband. So, you know, there wasn't... There was a lot of stagnation there. But it's really awesome to see at 71 years old how quickly you can shake that crusty dust off of the stagnation and, and open someone's eyes and, and just change things really quickly. But what's more amazing is seeing that somebody at 71 years old still wants to grow and change. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm stopping one more time. Because when Joy and I were, were walking back, we just, like I said, had to stop off the library to pick up some books. And we ran into the other woman from book club, the one that I talked about uh, being like Margot Kidder, because she's like su such a super speedy talker. Um, and, and, and we were going to maybe hang out with her this summer, but we haven't. Um, and I wasn't sure if maybe she and Joy had formed a friendship that I didn't know about. But because, um, you know, women were kind of weird with our dynamics and friendships and sisterhood versus bitchiness and jealousy and cattiness. We got it in us. We're always working on it. Um, um, but no, it turns out the two of them don't have any friendship. And I really got this sense from Joy that Joy had no interest in forming a friendship with her. Book club was fine, but she really wanted to have a friendship with me, the one that was going to call her out for using the fucking term lazy. What the fuck? That's insane. My my head is in my hand right now because I still just like can't believe it. Um, okay, so back to back to the nicer ending. Can we just go back to the nicer ending? She's 71 years old and still looking to grow. You know, what I'm saying here, Sanchez, is is while well, she still used a term, an abhorrent term that fell too easily from her lips. I bet if one of her kids were gay, maybe she would be honest about it. Does that help? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, words. <sighs> but I'm still going to go back to what I said before. It's fucking impressive and awe-inspiring to have someone almost 20 years older than me still looking to grow and change and be a better human being for herself and for others. 
just like it was super impressive seeing somebody who's 13 years younger than, than me showing so much more brains and sensitivity than men my age and older. And I don't know if this bodes well for younger generations or if he's, he's a fluke. But whichever way it is, um, you know, book club friends make the best friends. There you go.